Hi, it's Phil from Teach Blend, and today we're going to be looking at how we can use Microsoft Teams for remote learning and teaching. So today what we're going to look at is a little bit of an introduction into Microsoft Teams and then how we can use this to schedule meetings, communicate with students, um, add assignments and that kind of thing. We'll also be looking at how we can use Microsoft Teams in our departments so that we can communicate with our department if we need to work remotely. Now it's worth noticing what Microsoft Teams actually is if you haven't used it before. It is essentially a communication hub and it allows staff, students and various departments to collaboratively work together on an online space. And this can include things like chat, video conferencing, creating meetings, adding assignments and then customizing it using extra tabs at the top and individual tab channels for topics. I hope you find this useful and if you need any help or support please drop a comment thank you so let's launch microsoft teams now i'm using mac so i find the microsoft teams app in the app bar if you're using windows click start and choose microsoft teams you'll notice then that teams open straight away and if you're in a chat it will load automatically if you haven't got microsoft teams installed you can navigate to office.com to access the system you'll use your college email and password to log in. Once you have logged into this, you will have access to all of the online applications 365 has to offer, one of these being Microsoft Teams. I would recommend downloading Microsoft Teams and to do this you'll see a link in the description or just google download Microsoft Teams. Here you'll be able to download a version of Microsoft Teams to whatever device you need. In this example we will be using the downloaded version of Teams. This is a quick introduction to the Microsoft Team interface. The first option is to start a new chat, which you can do group chats or individual chats to either students or various members of your department. The command box is useful as it gives you options that you can write in what you want to do and it will navigate to the setting that you wish to change or the option you wish to use. You can also manage your profile, join or create new teams or classes, you can manage your team and edit settings such as removing or adding members. You can view your team by going directly into it and clicking the icon. You can add extra apps by clicking the app bar and you can also personalize your experience as well as organize your various teams. On the left hand side is your main navigation bar and this is known as the charm bar. So let's have a quick look at a class team. In a class team you can add channels to manage your team and channels are great for topics such as each individual unit or a study program. You can also add class notebooks to have a virtual notebook and a virtual exercise book for each student and a master one for the teacher. You can also add grades and open assignments so that will allow you to add grades in for students and also mark their work and create assignments. You can also add extra tabs to expand the product, such as adding Wakelet. You can add files into the chat bar and you can also start a discussion with your class. Every team has a channel and it is really important that you use these to keep the team organised. We're just going to have a quick look now at a staff team that's created rather than a classroom team. As you can see the interface, the channels and everything is pretty much the same. All the common features that you are used to using a classroom team are in a staff team. The only real difference is the top tabs which have more features for a staff so such as a wiki or a staff notebook and they don't have the features such as a classroom notebook. When you are adding and removing members from a staff team you have different options so in a classroom you have teachers and students, in a staff team you have owners and members. So let's have a look at the first option in Teams, which is Activity. This pulls in all of your activity from your chats, meetings and various teams into one interface. You can also filter this for unread and mentions to quickly access the result that you need. When you click on a particular activity in the activity feed, it will take you directly to that conversation or message within the team. So this is a really easy way of making sure that things do not go unread option is chat. To start a new chat you click the chat option and then on the top click the chat icon. Here you'll be able to start a new message or create a message to a group of people. 
on the bottom you can type your new messages and communicate and you also have options such as adding attachments and sending various things such as videos you can on the left hand side to stay organized pin various chats that you use often and you will also have recent chats where you can talk and speak to the people you've recently contacted contacts is also useful for those people that you are in day-to-day -to -day communication with each chat also has a files option which when you click you can see all the files that are shared between the individual or that group chat the next option is the teams and this is where all of your teams are listed you can edit the team and manage settings by clicking the free ellipses tool and choosing the option that you wish to add you can get a link to the team and this allows you to quickly give a link to share with students or staff. You can also add individual members by clicking the add member and adding the member to that team. If you do this as a classroom team, you will have options to add the team as a teacher or as a student. So when you click add member, you'll see here you have students and teachers. So it works slightly different in a class team, but it's essentially the same option. So here you can see I'm adding Mev as a student, but I could also add Mev as a teacher in that class. And the teacher has slightly more rights than the students do so that you can manage that team. To join or create a team, click the join or create team option. We're gonna create a team. So we're gonna click create team. Here you'll see the different options that you have for your various teams. The most common are class and staff. We're gonna create a class team so that we can use this with our students. If using with staff, choose staff team. Here, I'm gonna choose a name, and then I could also add a description, as well as using an existing template. When I click next, this will allow me then to start adding students into my team. If you was using a staff team, this would be changed to owners and members. The teachers have more rights, so in here, I could add a co-teacher if I needed to. Once you have created your team, you'll see a blank team has been created with the name. If you click next to the team on the ellipses, you'll be able to manage the team, add extra members, and also set up your channels, which is the first thing we should do, provide a structure for our team. So for example, I could have a revision channel name. I can set this to standard or to private, and private will allow you to add only certain students or staff to that channel. So this is really useful for differentiation. The next in the team, you'll see that you have an option to upload files and class materials. To do this, in the folder called class materials, you can upload files directly into there, which will give read-only access to the students. Any other file in the area, all students will be able to edit. The next is class notebook, and this allows a virtual exercise book of sorts that you can set up with your students so they can have individual pages and their own pages within that class notebook to organize their files. Next is assignments, which we'll look into a little bit more later, but allows you to assign assignments to students. When an assignment has been done, you will also be able to grade and view the submissions in the grades tab. So we're just gonna go back now to the main posts tab. Here, this is where most of the conversation and files will happen. So at the bottom, you can start a conversation with your class or team, and they can engage in that discussion. Each member in the team can start a discussion and conversation, and you can also reply, like, and share. A real top tip is the immersive reader, and this allows students and staff to have an easier reading experience. So this could be, for example, changing the font, increasing the text size, changing the background, translating the text, and reading the text aloud. So let's have a quick look at files. We can share files within our team to students or staff members by clicking on the attachment tab and choosing OneDrive. Here, you'll be listed with all of the files that are stored on your OneDrive collection. In this example, I'm gonna send a presentation to my students. I'm gonna put it in the class materials so that students cannot edit that file. And then I can start a new conversation which you could tell the students what to do or notify them. We can also add extra things into our conversation, as you can see at the bottom. One of the most common is meet now. We're just gonna click schedule a meeting. And here, this is when you start to use video conferencing facilities to either hold a meeting or teach electronically with your students, and they can all join this. 
It's worth noticing when you set up your meeting that if you add it in a channel, you do not need to invite various members of the team. They will all be notified if they are a member of the channel that you are posting into. As you can see now, I have scheduled that meeting. All members will be notified as it's in general, and then you can join this to participate in the class or discussion. A top tip if using this with students is to edit this so that they can only participate in the meeting, they can't take control. So in meeting options, if you can change this to only me, then by default, this will stop students being able to take over the main meeting so they are participants. It could be then on the fly, you give that various access to those students if you wish them to present some work within that class. As you can see now, the remote lesson or meeting that you are wanting to participate in with students is listed in the channel. All students and staff can then join that who are part of the channel to have the remote lesson or discussion. You can have various options such as muting your microphone, turning off your camera, sharing your screen, having more options such as blurring your device background, which is really useful if you are in your bedroom or your class and you don't want people to see the background. And you can also record the lesson for students if they are not managing to see it live. Again, this is also useful for staff members. The meeting chat is great if you've got members within the meeting that can't participate using a microphone and you can also manage the people within the meeting slash remote classroom. I can also share my screen, which is absolutely essential when delivering a remote lesson. So here, as you can see, the PowerPoint that I've just uploaded, I could actually add to this presentation, meeting or remote lesson. I can navigate through this and talk my students through this on the go. Again, I could also click this icon here to stop students being able to click through the presentation and I am totally in control of everyone's progress through this virtual lesson. So this is really, really useful for teaching electronically, but also if you was discussing a document within a team. I can also share my screen. So here you can see I am sharing my screen with everyone else in the meeting. Again, this can be really useful for your areas. It might be that you are showing the students a program or you might be using this as a discussion prompt for remote support. So let's have a look at now some other options within our chat feature. One of these is hidden within the free ellipses, which is really, really useful. And it's adding a YouTube video. You can add extra apps into here as well to add extra functionality to the chat, such as Polly. Here, I'm just going to show you how to add a YouTube video. I'm just using an example of a dog walking. However, this could be an educational video for your students or a video you wish to discuss in your meeting. As you can see, that embeds directly into the chat pane in our general tab. We can also send praise to students or staff, which is really useful to tell students they are doing well or they have answered a question well. You can also, within the chat window, have your discussions with your students and open more of the chat window on the bottom left. Here you can choose who can reply if it is an announcement or a conversation. So announcements are really useful to grab the attention of your students. So as you can see here, you can also post this into multiple channels and decide who can reply or who not. I'm just going to discard this, but it's a really useful idea. It might be that you want to discuss a website with your students or staff members as well. So here I'm just going to go on to the BBC News and as you can see a very fitting news article has just appeared and we can copy this and then paste that into our conversation. And this could start a prompt with your students to discuss this website. So the idea is, is that you use posts to start talking to the students about various things within your lesson. You can also expand your channels within your teams by clicking the add tab option and this allows you to add various educational apps and 365 tools. So it might mean, for example, a Word document that you are all working on within your team slash classroom can be added in. There is loads of apps that you can add to add extra functionality to your team for either teaching and learning or for your team to work more collaboratively. So for example, I could add Wakelet. Now Wakelet's great for organizing content. So I might add a Wakelet URL here, which I have built for my team slash classroom or students so they can all access this. 
I cut Ethernet Flipgrid to engage students with discussion and video responses. So as you can see that what you can do with Teams is you can add various EdTech apps that you are comfortable with to really engage your students and have that one central location access the various resources and files you want the students to use. Another option in Teams is the assignments and this allows you to submit tasks to students so they can complete it. You can also feature in quizzes so that they can do some formative assessment. So let's create an assignment in our test class. Here you'll see that you can enter a title, you can categorize it and give instructions and resources. So resources are really useful, for example, if you have a writing frame or a supporting document to help the students. You can also choose whether or not they can edit their own copy or it is just a read only file that they are looking at for support. You can also add rubrics and grading, which is useful if you are wanting to mark the assessment, especially for summative assessment, but could also be useful for formative assessment as well. You can then choose where to assign this to, which students you wish to add this to. So for example, you may have a group of students. You can add the date due, the time due, and also turn on turn it in. So this is a really easy way of getting students to submit work. You can also create a quiz. And a quiz is a great way of engaging students, especially for end of lesson or end of term topics that you just want to check their knowledge and understanding. You can also use Microsoft Forms to work with the quizzes so that they are automatically marked to reduce teacher workload. You can start from scratch or use an existing form for this. So it's really useful if you, for example, you have made a quiz for one class and you want to share it with another one. So let's have a look now at where our assignment actually sits. So if you look in test class, for example, and mine, assignments has a tab at the top. You can create assignments directly in here to bypass the assignment tab, and it will fill in some of the assignments and channel options already available. Once set up, you will also have a grades tab where you can view the student's work. So if I open up an example now of assignments that have already been marked or viewed, you will see a grades tab option. As you can see here, all of the top are the assignments and then on the left, there's my students. And then as you can see, they have, you can see that you have either viewed or marked that work. So let's just go into this example now and open up the student's work. Now this student hasn't actually completed anything, it's just a test one with the writing frame, but you can click on here and you can edit this work. So for example, you may be adding in um, dictation, you may be adding in some extra comments such as a marking scheme, which you can put directly into that document. You can also add feedback on the right hand side and view history to see the progress of that assignment. This is a really simple and effective way of marking your students' work all within the familiar Office 365 interface. So let's look now quickly at how we can manage our team slash classroom. So I'm going to click Manage Team and here I can add extra students or teachers if I needed to. I can add extra channels so that it might be a new task and I can modify these channels as well. I can also go into settings and choose a theme and choose what permissions my students have access to so it might be that you want to turn something off I can also add guest permissions as well if you've got external teachers fun stuff's quite useful because you can turn off gifts if your students are misusing them and you can also add tags etc you can also use analytics and this tells you how well your class is participating into the team and you can finally add more apps to add extra functionality to the team I hope you found this useful and thank you for bearing with me. It was a long video, but if you've got any help or concerns, please drop a comment and I can try and support as best as I can. Please remember to like and subscribe to Teach Blend.